Welcome to Bald Guy DIY. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to 3D print the perfect case to wall mount a Raspberry Pi and touchscreen. I love using touchscreens in my project, and many times I've thought of the idea of mounting a project on the wall so that a user going by could interact with it, or so that it could be used for something like home automation or thermostat or something like that. I looked around online and while I found quite a few different designs for wall mounting the Raspberry Pi touchscreen, I did find that most of them weren't robust enough. They were great if you were gonna be a single person in a home or if you didn't have any children or other people that would visit and play with the screen, but if you were gonna give it any kind of jostling or wear and tear, it was probably going to break the bracket or cause it to fall off the wall. And that's certainly not something that I want to have happen. Most of the designs are also two parts, which allows the base part to be screwed into the wall, and then the finished part, which surrounds the screen and allows it to be inserted into the base to form you know, a single piece. However, they are prone to fall apart or come out of the base if you give them the jostle from the right angle. I wanted mine to be tamper-proof, and so I thought of an idea to put a solid ring around the entire thing so that the two parts could be covered up and the join could be made to prevent it from falling out of the bracket and to give it some increased stability so even if someone wanted to tamper with it, it's nice and solid to the wall. So without further ado, let me show you the design. The first thing I did was head over to thingiverse.com and search for a Raspberry Pi touchscreen wall mount model. And what I found was a bunch of different designs. As I mentioned, some more flimsy than others. The one that I found that was the most robust is this Raspberry Pi screen wall mount, which is two solid pieces with a good amount of material thickness. And as you can see here, uh, nice screenshots of what the device looks like when it's mounted inside the enclosure. Now they did have a slot in the bottom that you could bring the cable out, but for my use, I want to bring the cable out the back of the device so that it'll be completely clean without any cables from the outside. So I downloaded those files and printed them on my 3D printer. Now I use 0.3 millimeter layer height. Now it took a couple of hours to print the base parts for this particular design. Now to add to that design, I also created a ring that goes around the whole thing. So the ring is going to be the height of the two pieces put together, three millimeter wall thickness, and then it's gonna follow the outer shape of the design. And it was important to me to have something that would cover up the seams and give it more rigidity. As you can see when I put it together, it's a little bit flimsy and there's a way for you to just pop the screen off. But by adding the ring, you create quite a bit more strength and you prevent the whole thing from being able to be removed, which is the whole point of it all. What you're left with is, after printing, you can see here's the base piece, which is gonna screw into the wall and the slot there that's gonna be covered up as you can see in the outer ring. And then, and the top piece, which is going to connect to the Raspberry Pi touchscreen and it has holes already made for the mounting hardware that comes on the Raspberry Pi official touchscreen. My ring piece that I created, as I mentioned, three millimeter wall thickness, and I also added two countersunk screw holes on each side so that I can join it all together. To assemble it, you're simply gonna lay the Raspberry Pi touchscreen face down and then add the screws in order to make it secure. The one thing I didn't like about this model is that the screw holes don't align very well and could use a little better placement. But for the sake of assembly on this video, I didn't choose to drill up the holes a little bit bigger or notch them in a way that would allow the screws to align more carefully. So you can see I had some trouble with it. Eventually I just pulled it out, made sure I had the alignment right by moving the edge of that frame a little bit and then screwing down the second screw. I didn't bother to do all four for the sake of this demonstration, but as I mentioned, you might have to drill it out or just widen those holes a little bit in order to have room to install the screws properly with the original design. test fit that base piece and you can see with the two of them together you do get a pretty solid design but it's also very easy to slip the top piece off and I'm trying to avoid that when I install it on the wall permanently. To make it much more secure and prevent those two pieces from coming apart I'm going to install the ring over top of it. Now that ring fits on quite nicely though I don't have the alignment very good as I'm doing it here. 
It does fit together quite nicely though. And what it does is it prevents the top piece from sliding upwards as it needs to, to disengage from the base. In order to prevent the ring itself from being removed, I'm going to drill through the side through my screw holes into that inner piece, just enough to have a pilot hole that the screws can follow it later. That will cause the base to connect very securely to the ring and prevent it from being lifted off by someone without proper tools. No longer will it be able to be removed by accident. It would take quite a deliberate attempt to take it apart. I'm going to use drywall screws here simply because they're black in color and match the color of the enclosure. And as you can see here, I use the full length screw, which is about an inch and a half or two inches long, which of course protrudes quite a bit further than necessary. But when you have them all in, it makes quite a secure fit and it's a perfectly contained model, which has a lot of strength and rigidity. in order to make those screws a little less obtrusive and to make it so that there's a lot more room inside the enclosure space to add other components. Simply use a pair of linesman pliers or side cutting pliers to cut off the length of the screw so that when you put it together, there's a lot less of the screw sticking out the end. You can always make it as flush as you want. In this case, that was good enough for me. To show you what it looked like attached to a wall, I'm simply going to demonstrate how it would look like if you were connected to the wall. I'm gonna simply use a piece of scrap shelving unit and put in four construction screws in order to hold it to the base. If you wanted ultimate strength on a wall, especially if it was something that's drywall, you probably want to use some anchors to make sure it has a lot of holding strength to the wall. Then I slide in the top piece, fitting it in as it needs to be in order to interlock with the base, and then slide the ring over and it's ready to attach the screws again and make the whole thing solid and ready to use. Depending on your circumstances, you might not find it necessary to screw in these holding screws, but for me, I didn't want them to be tampered with unless somebody has a screwdriver in order to remove those screws first. Here's a final look of the unit. As you can see, it's quite strong and doesn't move at all when you flex it with your fingers. And here's a final look with one of the touchscreen puzzles I created a while ago. You can just see how professional it looks all lit up and with no other hardware showing on the outside of the enclosure. So there you have it. One more piece added to an existing two-piece model in order to cover up those seams, keep the whole thing in place and prevent it from being jostled loose, even if that's the intention of the user. Of course, these are plastic parts. So if you really wanted to take something heavy to it, I'm sure you could damage it. But for most cases, it's going to be very solid and going to withstand a lot of accidental bumps and knocks over the years. I'm sure if you try this design yourself, you'll be quite happy with how solid it is. And let me know in the comments if you do try it and what your impression of the design was. If you like this kind of content, please let me know by giving the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel as I post a new video every week so there's always more content to see. Leave me a comment or send me an email. My information's in the description below. If you like these files, feel free to send me an email as well and I'll share them with you. Until next time, in all your DIY projects, keep them safe, sound, and secure, and don't be afraid to be balder.